what you're seeing now is worksheet A. Worksheet A was distributed to each student uh, upon me presenting the first circuit configuration on the whiteboard. After I completed that presentation, uh, I asked each student to complete the leftmost column, which is in reference to the circuit I just presented on the whiteboard, and I asked them to complete the first two entries of that column. drawing on the board is a Xenier diode in bipolar junction transistor voltage regulator with output sampling. It's a modified version of our previous circuit. Uh, what's been modified is I've added this output sampling circuit and this additional transistor here. And this circuit provides uh, corrections for changes in output voltage much more so than the previous one. It's a, it's a provides better regulation, but at the same time, it's a uh, more sophisticated design. But anyway, let's go through this here. Let's uh, assume that the output voltage drops, and that would occur if a heavy load was attached to the output side of the regulator. Okay, Again, that's going to cause the output voltage to drop. At the same time, the voltage coming off our sampling circuit will also drop, and that voltage is applied to the base of our this additional transistor that we've added. Okay. That will cause the resistance between the collector and emitter of that transistor to go up. And upon doing so, the voltage on the collector side of this transistor with respect to ground will also go up. That same voltage is applied to the upper or to applied to the base of the upper transistor. And the emitter voltage will also increase as well and cause the output voltage to climb back up to its original value. What you're seeing in front of you now is Worksheet B. Worksheet B was distributed upon me presenting the second circuit configuration on the whiteboard. This activity involved the student evaluating the circuit with regards to a decrease in the load current, which was just the opposite of what I had presented on the board. Once the student had completed Worksheet B, um, Previously, then I had them return back to worksheet A and fill out the upper two entries in the central column, which dealt with the circuit previously presented on the whiteboard. This is our third circuit configuration that I just drew. Um, this circuit uh, also provides output sampling, so we retain the output sampling circuit, but now I've added an additional transistor in the system to um, handle short circuits that may appear on the output side of the regulator. If for some reason the output side, there's a direct short applied across it, if we had the previous circuit here, that transistor there would burn up because of excessive current passing through it going to over to the load. But this additional transistor will bypass that current around that transistor and allow that excessive current to flow through the load without damaging this transistor. How this works is as that excessive load current passes through this system that causes a voltage drop right here across the short circuit resistor, turning this transistor on and turning this transistor off and causing the load current to be routed around the original uh, Pass transistor. Once the third circuit configuration had been presented on the whiteboard, I asked the students to return to worksheet A and had them complete the upper two entries as shown here uh, for the previous circuit configuration presented on the board. This is the other group of students currently working on experiment 22. As you can see, they're filling out the accompanying worksheet and the trainer is also in, in front of them as well. Okay. Uh, 
once both groups of students had completed experiment 22 and 23, I had each student return to worksheet A and asked each student to complete the lower two entries of all three columns as shown here. Okay, now that y'all have completed the two lab uh, activities, uh, we're going to be moving on to the closing activities uh, for today's lesson. And those two closing activities involve troubleshooting um, two voltage regulator circuits. The first one is on page 258 of your chapter 9 handout. Okay, and can you all tell me what type of voltage regulator circuit that is? How would you identify that? At the, the circuit at the very bottom of page 258, what type is it? Of course, right here is a clue right here as well on your sheet. <laughs> it's a Zener diode and VJT voltage regulator circuit that does not employ output sampling. Okay? Now, what I'm going to have you all do is fill this table out. Okay? You do for both the Zener voltage and the output voltage for these various fault conditions. Each student is going to be assigned one of these five fault conditions. The answers for both of these columns are provided down here. Here's your choices. Here's the voltage choices for the Zener voltage, and here's the voltage choices for the output voltage. So I've given you the answers, but you don't know where those answers actually go in. It's up to you all as a group to figure that out. But each student is going to be assigned a particular fault to provide both voltage quantities for it, okay? But you're going to work at it as a group to fill this entire table out. So all five of you will be working together now. During this part of the lesson, the students will be troubleshooting this circuit right here, which is a um, voltage regulator without output sampling. That we'll be, we'll be working as a team, and they were given this sheet as you see here. And each student will be assigned one of these five fault conditions. And I will ask each student to come up to the board and fill in the respective rows for each of the fault conditions that were assigned to each student. Right here. Right here. Right here. Okay. What you're seeing right now is the students collaborating on the first troubleshooting exercise. They're comparing their answers with each other so they can appropriately fill out the table. What's your first value there? 8.8. Okay, that's an 8. Okay, sorry. 8.8. Eight point one, is that right? Okay, that's what you came up with. Okay. All right, Curtis, uh, you got the blue marker. Please complete your two entries. All right. Looking good so far. Maria, you're my next victim here. Participant is Greg. Use the green marker, please, when you get to the board. Uh, we're four for four so far. Which means that uh, Kelly's ears should be correct. And even, even if you switched them around, it'd still be correct. <laughs> All right. Just switch. Oh, very good. That those those ten entries are correct for our first troubleshooting activity. Okay. We're going to move on now to to the second troubleshooting activity, which is this is another team-oriented troubleshooting activity. Uh, in this case here, the students working as a team will troubleshoot this circuit, which does employ output sampling. Uh, this worksheet here was passed out to each student prior to this activity, and each student it was assigned one of these five fault conditions. And as before, I will ask each student to come up to the board 
and complete their respective entries for their particular fault condition.